YouTube outros are often overlooked, but they are essential to the growth of your channel. By creating a simple YouTube end screen, you can increase the number of subscribers to your channel, extend channel watch time, and encourage more video engagement via comments and likes. Hey, this is Nick from Snapbun. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create a YouTube outro screen by repurposing some end screen card templates that will be customizable for your channel. So let's get right into it. What you're going to want to do first is make sure that you have the best YouTube outro size so that your end screen is optimized for YouTube's guidelines and so your video elements display properly at the end of your video. For standard HD videos, the recommended YouTube end screen size is 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. This is an aspect ratio of 16 9. If you shot your video in 4K, your YouTube outro size will be 3840 pixels by 2160 pixels. The end screen dimensions vary based on the resolution of your video. When creating a YouTube outro, you'll need to understand that the end screen can only be added while you're editing your video before being uploaded into YouTube. You will not be able to add a YouTube end screen once your video is published to the site. Before we can start designing, you'll need to know the limitations along with the different types of video elements that you can add to your end screen. For any given video, YouTube allows you to add four total video elements. You can add a branded circular subscribe prompt, or different variations of rectangular video elements such as playlists and recommended videos. You'll need to remember that there is a safe zone in place, so you'll want to design your end screen around the restricted area. Using Snapple, we can easily make a free YouTube end screen in less than five minutes. So once in, I wanna navigate down to headers and banners and click on the YouTube end screen option. We can now choose to create a YouTube outro from scratch or we can choose from a variety of pre-designed YouTube end screen templates that Snappa offers. Once I've found a layout that I like, I'm gonna click on it and we can begin to design our YouTube outro screen. When you have your canvas open, you'll notice that there's already a safe zone in place. To toggle the safe zone on or off, navigate to the YouTube button on the top menu and click on it. I'm going to keep the safe zone on so I know exactly where to place my video elements. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the background of my end screen. I'm going to navigate to the background tab on the left here. I can either choose from a photo background, a pattern background, I can upload my own background, or I can choose a colored background. In this case, I'm going to go to my patterns background. I'm going to scroll down and find a pattern that I like. So the next thing I'm going to do is delete the rectangular design element in the center since I think it takes away from the simple background, and I'm going to edit the text. First up, what I'll do is change the color of the text to white so that I can see it on my design properly. I'm also going to do the same thing with the icons. Now that I can see the text on the design properly, I'm going to click on it and edit the text to my handle. I'm also going to add or remove these icons for the platforms that I offer. I'm going to replace Twitch with Facebook, so I'm going to click on it. Can click the trash can or I can click the delete button. Now I'll navigate to my graphics tab. I'll navigate to the icons tab and I'll search for Facebook. Now I can scroll down in the icons library and choose the Facebook logo that I like. Once I have it, I'll click on it. From here, I'm going to click on it once it's on the canvas. I'm going to change the color from black to white and I'm going to resize it by dragging the corners and reposition it to where I want it to be. Once I'm done editing the text and icons, I'm going to move the icons down so it creates some separation. I'm also going to realign the text so that it's center. Typically, you would want to change the color of this rectangular element. However, I like how it's contrasted onto the purple background, and I'm actually going to use this blue as an accent color. So I'm going to copy the color code of this blue, and I'm going to navigate to the rectangular video element for my video. And on the border, I'm going to change the border from white to this exact blue that we just pasted. I'm going to do the exact same for the video element over here. So the last thing we're going to do is replace this profile picture in the center here. Since the subscribe end screen element is going to cover this photo, we're actually just going to replace the circle with a colored circle. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click on the trash can and delete the layer. Now I'll navigate to the shapes tab. I'm going to select the circle shape. 
Once it's on the canvas, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to change the color to the blue that we had before. And now I'm going to resize it by dragging the corners and reposition it to the center. So just like that, we have a professional looking end screen. The next thing I'm going to do is rename it. And I'm also going to save it in Snappa so I can make modifications in the future. And I'm going to download it as a Retina JPEG for the best possible quality. Once you're finished with your end screen, you can now drag it from your downloads folder into your video editing timeline. And you'll want to make sure that your end screen is a minimum of 5 seconds, which is YouTube's requirements, and a maximum of 20 seconds, which is another YouTube requirement. But in this case, we're going to keep it at around 10 seconds, and we're going to add a basic fade transition so that the video seamlessly moves into the end screen. Once your end screen is added into your video, you can then export your video, upload it into YouTube before adding your video elements in. You'll need to remember that your end screen elements can only be displayed for a maximum of 20 seconds at the end of your video. So when you're editing your YouTube outro card into your video, you'll want to make sure that it is not shown over 20 seconds. Ideally, you will want your end screen card to be displayed for about 10 seconds so that viewers have enough time to process your call to actions. So that's it for today's YouTube outro tutorial. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel as I'll be continuing to make more and more YouTube content like our YouTube thumbnail video and our YouTube banner video. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Cheers.